Juliana Reyes. I'm work at the ACDC, and I'm going to speak as um, I think you are able to see this. I will hide this. Um, I, I'm I'm going to speak about the public health consideration for monkeypox in EU8, that a document that was published uh, some weeks ago by the ACDC. So I don't have any conflict of interest to declare, and this is the outline that I'm going to follow. First, I'm going to speak about epidemiology just a bit, how is the outbreak uh, now, and the numbers. I'm going to focus more in vaccination, risk communication, and communi community engagement. Um, from this, I'm going to just draw some conclusions. So first, this is just a glance of the numbers that have been reported in the last um, months. Uh, since the beginning of the break, and as of 11 of May 2023, 87,000 cases have been reported by 100 140 deaths has been reported, so very few deaths have been reported. And in the last few months, most of the cases have been reported by the region of the Americas and the Western Pacific region. And as you can see here, uh, there are very few cases reported by the European region. And in the last weeks, uh, no, no cases have been reported by African region. So this is the epic curve that we have seen here in the European region. And as of 4th of May 2023, 25,000 cases of MPOX has been reported uh, from 45 countries. Uh, most of the cases have been reported by Spain, France, Germany, Netherlands, Italy, and Portugal. And you could see that in the last uh, six months, there is a flattening and very few cases have been reported from different countries. However, I just want to highlight that 10 countries reported at least one case in the past three months. And France uh, experienced an outbreak that was uh, described or reported uh, in the Centre Val de Loria, and I'm sorry for my French. Uh, these are 19 cases that were reported from 1st to, uh, the January to the 3rd of April. Uh, most of the cases were MSN between 25 and 50 six years old. Uh, they were no, they, they didn't have any history of hospitalization and they didn't have any links with common events. What we know is that uh, half of the cases were uh, complete vaccinated and uh, seven cases were not vaccinated and two uh, cases were incomplete vaccinated. And I highlighted this uh, cluster because we are expecting more cases as, uh, like this one, more outbreak like this one in the coming weeks as the summer is, is upon us. So regarding age and gender, what we already know is that 99 cases are among men. And uh, from those that we gather information uh, of age, we know that 39 cases are between 31 and 40 years old. Uh, from the variable of sexual orientation that we gather from those reported, we know that uh, around 47% uh, were MSN. And uh, from those that uh, report a zero status, we know that among those that were reported with MPOX, 39% were HIV positive. So these are the symptoms that we reported for those that uh, experienced MPOX in the during the last year. Uh, we know that the median time between symptoms, onset, and diagnosis was seven days. Uh, most of the cases report any type of rash, followed by systemic symptoms that include fever, fatigue, muscle pain, chills, and headache. 50% um, of the cases report uh, any kind of skin or mucosal lesion, uh, followed by localized lymphadenopathy. So this is the timeline of public health response. And I don't want to highlight all the things that had happened in the last year, but I want to just set that uh, almost a year ago, uh, the first case was reported by UK. Uh, and then we start to experience many cases in different parts of the world. And the response from different levels and from different institutions uh, was uh, to try to address the best response uh, to tackle the outbreak. Uh, I want to highlight something that Nina said before is that on the 8th of June, MPOX was declared a public health emergency of international concern. And this is important because many uh, resources were allocated to respond to the outbreak. Uh, 
And in the last week on the 11th of May, uh, WHO held again the, the meeting, this fifth meeting uh, of International Health Regulation Emergency to agree that the, uh, due to the decline in the numbers of the uh, reported uh, MPOC cases, uh, this disease is no longer considered a public health emergency of international concern. However, there are remaining uncertainties of the disease, such as mode of transmission in some countries, poor quality of report data, continued uh, lack of effectiveness countermeasures, uh, that uh, as these are long-term challenge, uh, it's better to address it uh, through a sustained effort in a transition towards a long-term strategy. So MPOX is no longer considered a fake. And now I will move on to the document that I, I, I mentioned before, which is the public health consideration for MPOX in UE context that was published uh, by the SEC on April uh, of this year. And I will focus mainly on vaccination and risk communication and communication engagement. Uh, first, uh, the document describes uh, the different strategies for vaccinations that uh, countries can implement to control or to try to uh, reduce the number of cases of MPOX. The first one is the primary prevention preventive vaccination, which refers to the vaccination of group of, uh, of individuals at high risk of exposure of MPOX virus infection. This level of risk of infection may differ between these groups and is linked to the specific epidemiological situation in each country. And target um, gay, bisexual, other men or transgender people who have sex with men with different uh, risk behaviors, uh, sex workers and uh, occupational exposure people, uh, mainly healthcare workers, and those groups that can suffer for, of uh, severe disease such as children, pregnant women, and immunosuppressed individuals. The other strategy is post-exposure vaccination, which refers to the immunization against to MPOX virus of close contact of cases to prevent the onset of the disease or mitigate disease severity. And this strategy depends on the possibility to identify contacts of cases through contact tracing. And this, import, this is important because uh, before to use this strategy, a uh, contact strategy, uh, contact tracing strategy has to be in place to find as many contact or cases as possible. Uh, these contacts include sexual partners, household contacts, healthcare workers, and individuals with a prolonged physical or high risk contact. Uh, in the context of a limited supply, also uh, uh, this strategy should include those that can develop severe disease, such as children, pregnant women, and monosuperation. Press, uh, immunocompromised individuals. This strategy should be administered with uh, four days of fair exposure and up to 14 days after exposure in the absence of symptoms. So ECDC did a rapid review of official sources from 27 March to the 3rd of February of this year to understand better which strategy was used by countries. And what it was found is that um, both strategies was, uh, it were implemented in most of the in most of the countries. However, Italy and Liechtenstein uh, implement the primary prevention vaccination, and Cyprus, Estonia, Latvia, Malta implement the post exposure vaccination. So this is a table that uh, summarizes the number of doses administered by country and by month as of 3rd of March. And the total number of doses that were delivered in the UAE countries is around 300,000 doses. Uh, most of the doses were delivered in those countries that report the highest number of cases, which is uh, what is expected. And in the last part of the document, there is a table that um, summarizes uh, some uh, publications that try to mm, disentangle uh, one of the questions that we are still not able to respond, which is vaccine effectiveness. And from these tables, what we can uh, uh, draw is that vaccine effectiveness uh, reduce the risk of ending, uh, MPOX disease uh, with one dose is around 78%. Just take this number is not um, specific and the 
uh, studies that report this number are no updated. Uh, when two doses were given, there are more uh, studies and the effectiveness uh, is very wide. Uh, the range, the, this effectiveness range from 69 to 86% and the confidence intervals are very wider. So this is a knowledge gap that we still need to fill. But what we can uh, conclude from these uh, papers that uh, have been included in these tables in the document is that there is no difference between subcutaneous and intradermal administration broads in terms of vaccine effectiveness. So there are many ongoing studies to try to understand and to uh, describe better the effectiveness of vaccination. One is a lead by a lead by uh, EMA that coordinates a study on MPOX in German clinics. It's a multicenter prospective observational cohort. And the other one is the US MBA, which is observational cohort using large healthcare data sources. So we are expecting resources in the coming months to be able to understand better uh, which are the effectiveness in different strategies and in different groups several recommendations, including the document, but I just want to highlight these five. The first one is that individual level vaccination should not replace other protective measures, and those that are vaccinated should continue to avoid close contact with people with MPOX because they can be infected and they can uh, uh, prolong the, train, the change of transmission uh, in the community. The limited evidence available indicates that vaccine provides protection against MPOX virus. However, with one dose, uh, there is a, a illness can appear, but less severe. And with two doses, uh, there is the highest vaccine effectiveness, and therefore vaccination with two doses should be considered for all eligible individuals. Uh, and considering the limitation of vaccine supply, the two vaccine strategies can be combined, focusing on the individuals at uh, substantially higher risk of exposure and close contact for cases, respectively. So I will move uh, on to risk communication and community engagement, and I just want to present something that it was done by ECDC and WHO last year, and it's included in the new document that was published, uh, which are the 10 risk communication principles. I don't want to repeat all that you can see in this panel, but I just want to highlight that it's very important. Uh, target groups relevant to MPOX outbreak in Iran and the different parts uh, of the world. Uh, it's important to raise a level of concern proportionate to the risk of different population groups. Uh, tailor risk communication through channels that target groups uh, use and identify people and communities that can uh, deliver a, a, a very a, the message to those affected to be trust, but those that are high risk of exposure. And it's important to explain science simply and plain to foster trust and acceptance and analogous uncertainty because we don't know everything and we know and we need to let uh, people know that there are gaps in the knowledge. Uh, also, we need to recognize that people's people fatigue for restriction as a barrier to their compliance with health advice and package matches, message and health advice relevant to specific settings and circumstances. So RCCE is nothing without working with communities and actively engage with community organization, groups and leaders. It's important to guide and use community in science, knowledge and perceptions to design interventions alongside communities. And I just want to give an example here that uh, we did last year when we approached uh, to gather information to shape policies uh, regarding uh, vaccination. And at the time, we asked the community of those that were a uh, field that were in higher risk of getting exposed to uh, MPOX if they, they, were, they were willing to vaccinate or upset the vaccination in case the, the vaccine was offered. And what we found is that the response was timely 
was uh, was a uh, huge, and we could deliver that response, that response, or that the information that we wanted to this survey to different countries to include it in the strategies that they were shaping to uh, deliver vaccine strategies. So this is uh, uh, important uh, point that I want to highlight. Uh, also, it's important to engage at risk groups on how they can reduce the risk of exposure and act in case they suspect monkeypox, uh, and pox, and or have its symptoms. And um, uh, I, I think this is important now that the summer is coming. I already said that, but we need to engage with organizers of mass gathering to share accurate, practical, and targeted information to participants. So there are different challenge of RCCE, but I want to, to, to highlight two. One is the increased risk in the message that we are deliver, and also I already said include uncertainty of the, the, the knowledge that we have and the information that we know. Uh, these are the RCC uh, uh, guidance that has been produced by WHO and ECDC that are available in both websites in case you didn't know, uh, but uh, I suppose you, you, you already have seen it. And uh, ECDC is um, producing with, together with WHO different uh, documents to try to document the epidemiological evolution of uh, MPOX and we are ready just to, to see if they are increasing the numbers in the coming months. So finally, I just want to share the toolkit that was also done by ECC and WHO, and it's a guidance, and are, these are ready-to-use materials to enable event organizers to deliver a current and timely message before, during, and after a mass gathering event. So to conclude, uh, uh, cases of MPOX has been reported sporadically in 2023 with just one outbreak uh, in France, but we are expecting more cases to come. MPOX is no longer considered a fake as the long-term challenge will be better addressed through sustained efforts towards a long-term strategy, according to WHO. Those vaccines should continue to avoid close contact with people who have Mpox, and testing should be available for those exposed despite vaccine scheme. And the limited evidence available indicates that the vaccine provides protection against Mpox virus. However, two doses provide the highest vaccine effectiveness, and therefore vaccination with two doses should be considered for all eligible individuals. So uh, risk communication and community engagement is a key element in public health preparedness and response. Although risk communication is necessary, it is not sufficient. Finding ways to engage with at risk groups, including community-based organizations and civil society is a key and has been demonstrated during the last year. So quick integration of RCE and collaboration with regional lo and local actors has been uh, evaluated as a positive but we need to assess the value and the impact of these activities and outputs produced by member states, then try to leverage those that were uh, positive and were uh, effective and try to just uh, evaluate those that didn't work. And finally, I just want to highlight that MPOX detection, prevention, care and research should be integrated in the already existed uh, HIV and sexual transmitted disease control programs to packet all these diseases in a, a combined prevention strategy. And I want to acknowledge um, all the people that work in the document, and I want to thank especially to the SDGT at ACC, uh, especially Tamor Nori, Anastasia Paris, and Lina Nerdander. And I want to thank you, and I open for any questions. <laughs>